Hey guys, this is Suzanne Light coming back to you today with another Bible teaching lesson. If you are new to my channel and you're happening up on this channel for the first time, welcome. And my channel has a lot of different things that I cover. I do family vlogs, I do home tours, I do just anything trips that my husband and I make, anything that makes me happy, that's what I put on my channel. So, but I also love to teach the Word of God, and you will find a whole playlist where I have taught 1 Samuel. I haven't quite finished it. Great, great playlist. A playlist of just Bible lessons, and there's actually going to be a playlist on this book that I'm reading that I'm going to teach on today called The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. So, this is one of the best books and I'm not through reading it yet because I'm reading it slowly, but you can see highlight, underline, write words. It is a great book. And on lesson one, and you're gonna wanna go back to lesson one if you're just happening up on this. But lesson one, a lady wrote me and said this lesson had changed her life. That she had allowed herself to be victimized for years and that she was going to end it. She was taking back control of her life. She said, I feel so lighthearted. I feel so much clearer. I feel, feel peace and joy. And that's the reason that I do what I do, guys, is to teach the Word of God, maybe in a more personable, down-to-earth way than what you would hear at a, at a church. Just, you know, it's common folk to common folk teaching. That's what I want to do. When something truly inspires me, my first thought is to share with y'all. Because this life is hard. This life is not easy, but this life is doable with the power of Jesus Christ. And if you will go back to lesson one, to where I'm just going to touch just a few things where the bait of Satan, B-A-I-T, is... The thing that he uses to trap us the most is offense, being offended. Since I've been reading this, I can look back to everything major in my life, in my family's life, things like that, and see that offense is the root of all the problems. If we can get over being offended and handle it the way God wants us to, offense is not easy. It is not fun. It is not easy. And I'm not here to tell you, oh, don't worry about it. I'm here to tell you to say, get over it. Through the power of Jesus Christ, your Savior, get over it. I will tell you that this book is reading my mail. So I'm not just teaching it to you. I am absorbing it into my life. So let's get started on lesson two on the bait of Satan. Let's talk about massive offense. An offended Christian is one who takes in life, but because of fear cannot release what really needs to be released from their life because there's fear there. Matthew 24 verses 10 through 13 is scriptures where Jesus was telling the disciples what they could look for in the last days. And he says, and then many will be offended. Many, not a few, not a couple. He starts out and says, and then many will be offended. will betray one another and will hate one another. Do we see that today? Of course we do. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Their whole life is out of sync because they're offended. They have hatred, all this. So they're easily deceived because they're not walking with the Lord. And because lawlessness will abound, and we're seeing lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. There again, he uses the word many. The love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end, that's us guys, Let's hang in there. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Saved with promise of eternal life, living forever with our Savior. So 
With false teachings and loose morals, can we say 2022? False teaching, loose morals becomes a very destructive disease that God talked about. And that is the loss of true love for God and others. I heard John Bevere's son, Addison Bevere, say the other day, and there's just times when things are said that just sticks with you and you don't forget it. And I remember exactly what he called it. I said, LV, Louis Vuitton. <laughs> I won't have a real one. I'll have a fake one. <laughs> Louis Vuitton is the way I remember it. He said, the danger in our world right now is a low view of God. Where God used to be respected and revered, even by people that weren't in the church, by our government, by our schools, by businesses, by cities. Now, even now in the church, people have a lower view of God and a lower respect of him than ever before. And oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So what happens is that when you have that low view, sin can become dominant and sin can cool your love for God. And others, by turning your focus on yourself, what has happened to me? What do I want? What is going to happen to me? How can I make it better for me? So you cannot truly love if you only think of yourself because the love of God is a giving God. Just as he gives to us unconditionally, we have to give when we walk in Christ when we don't want to give. We have to love when we don't want to love. It's unconditional. We can never have the unconditional love that God has, but we can have a portion of it to show to others and to share with others. So Jesus was given this scripture actually as the sign of the end of times. And most of you, I think, would agree that we are in that season. Speaking of lawlessness, my children are at Panama City right now at spring break. And there were thousands of people that converged upon Panama City this weekend just to cause chaos. They didn't go for spring break. They went to destroy other people's spring break. That is lawlessness. There are videos of them going through the Walmart, just pulling stuff out of the shelves and into the floor, scaring customers to death. Lawlessness. We've seen it over and over in the riots and the burning of cities lawlessness. So if we've ever been in lawlessness, we're in it more in 2022 than our mankind, our timing of people living here has ever seen before. He said, notice that one of the signs of his pending return is that many will be offended. That's Matthew 24 verse 10. Many will be offended. Not a few, but many. The love of many will grow cold, he says. Now, the Greek word for love in this verse is agape. The most common Greek words for love is agape and philio. And philio defines a love that's among friends. It's a love, a, a, a friendship, like you treat me kindly, I'll treat you kindly, kind of like love and respect. But when you really get to talking about God's love, it is agape love. And it's the love that he sheds in the heart of his children. When they learn to love like him, they can love differently. It's the same love that Jesus gives to us so freely. It's unconditional. Listen to this. It's not based on performance. Mm -hmm. I would dare to say that 90% of our love is based on performance. But it's a love that gives even when rejected. Agape is the love Jesus shed when he forgave us from his cross. So the many that Jesus refers to are Christians whose agape has grown cold. How is your love for Christ? How is your love for God? How is your love for others? Has my love ever waxed cold for any of that? Yes. 
I can remember a time, maybe a couple times in my life that I've prayed to God to help me to fall back in love with him even more than ever before because I felt like my love had waxed cold. It's a de very dangerous place to be. And if we keep offenses piled up in our life, then that's going to cause our love to grow cold. See, it's so easy to love those that love us. I mean, you can just abound in Christian love when you're with people that love you and that are good to you. But it's not easy to have that same kind of love when somebody's mean to you, so when somebody speaks down to you, when somebody has betrayed you. And a friend of mine we're talking about today about the old term forgive and forget. It's not. You're not going to forget unless you have amnesia or something. But it's forgive, let go of the offenses, and try to remember it no more. Try to not make it an active part of your remembrance. Or when it does, the enemy, oh, don't you just love how he brings offenses back into your mind? You can see something. Or you, you're not even thinking about a person that has offended you. And it'll they'll just come in your mind. Well, that is the enemy trying to bring it right back for us. But that's when we say, mm -mm, under the blood of Jesus, go. We have to do our part. Jesus helps us to forgive, but we have to do our part to keep our mouth shut about things. Right? Right. So Galatians 6, 8, and 9 says, He who sows to his foes will of the flesh reap corruption. He explained, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Have you ever been weary in well-doing? Well, I have. <laughs> I have even said, I'm tired of doing good. I'm tired of always being the one to, you know, to forgive. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. But many times when I've said that before, God has said, huh, you don't have an option to get weary. Even if I got get weary, I can't let it, I can't stay there. See, if I plant corn, I'm not going to have pumpkins to come up, okay? But, and so if I plant my own desires, I will harvest a crop of sorrow and evil. So if I plant plants to please God, I'm going to harvest joy and everlasting life, the very things that he's promised. So I have to constantly be harvesting and planting and sowing and reaping. You know, it can be very discouraging to continue to do what's right and then not see any progress. But Paul challenged the Galatians and he challenges us to keep on doing good and to trust God for the results. I promise you, as an old woman sitting here that's been through a lot, in due season, you will reap what you sow, good or bad. But even when you grow weary and well-doing, you will reap the benefits of God. So we have to realize as Christians that the love that we're sowing to the Spirit will eventually reap seeds of love, and it will. It may take months or years for you to see it, but I've seen it before, and it will happen. If Christians would realize that God is faithful and he's going to do it, quit thinking of it in our, um, in our mind, in our way, in our doings. Quit thinking of it that way and think about that we're sowing it unto God for him to fix. Then we realize he's so much bigger. He's so much better. He's so much more powerful. It's going to happen. When we walk in selfish love, that's easily disappointed. That's when our expectations are not met. But when we walk in the spirit, in the power, in the footsteps of God, we can know that he's in charge of it. So many times when people are massively offended, they put up walls of protection. I, I wouldn't doubt to say that every one of us have got walls that we've got to take down, that we've got to work on. Proverbs eighteen nineteen says, a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bar of a castle. So offended brother or sister are harder to win than a strong fortified city that's so difficult to get in because 
they've put out this love, they've put out this concern for others, and they've been vulnerable and they've gotten hurt. And so they've put up these walls saying, I'm never going to get hurt again. And unless we yield to the Holy Spirit to help us and to change us and to take down these, see, we construct these walls after we get hurt to safeguard our hearts and to prevent any future wounds. That's kind of instinctively that we do that. That's that's the flesh part of us that does that. The focus of offended Christians becomes inward and introspected. Now there's a fine line here. When someone has massively offended you, there, there many times will not be total reconciliation. But for you, you've got to learn to open up and to love again. And that can be very hard. Our energy, if we're not careful, will be consumed with making sure that no further injuries happen to us. Instead of using our energy to be a soldier in the Lord's army. Been there, done that. Shut that heart down. No. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. not going there, not going there again. Not going. I'm not going to be hurt like that again. Mm -mm. No, instead of opening up to his father, I got to have you. I got to have you to make the situation right. I am dependent on you. See, we think, and probably to a certain extent it's true, that unconditional love gives others the right to hurt us. That may be true in certain parts, but what we've got to remember that if we throw away that unconditional love and that agape love, that it causes our love for everything else to wax cold as well. We're not just shutting down other people and shutting them down out of our lives. We are actually shutting down our loving mechanism. And that's where in that scripture, he said that many Love for God will even wax cold. When my sister died from suicide, I became so shut down that my love for God waxed very cold because I didn't want to hurt anymore. I thought if I can just shut down everything, this won't hurt as bad. I don't want to work for the Lord anymore. I don't want to do, I don't want to be the good person. I just want to stay within the confines of my home, mind my own business, and everybody leave me alone. Well, we're not designed to live that way. We're designed to give to what God has given us. You know, the Sea of Galilee, it freely gives and receives water. And because of that, because it has Fresh water going in, water going out. It's never stagnant. It has a, a, a huge supply of fish and plant life in it. But one of the places that uh, the water of the Sea of Galilee is carried away is by the Jordan River, which empties into the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea receives water, but it never empties anything out. And the Dead Sea is exactly what it says. It's dead. Life cannot be sustained when you have dead things living in it. In order, you have to take in, you have to give out, like the Sea of Galilee. If we take in, we hold on to it, we crunch down, and we say, I'm never going to be hurt again, I'm never given again, I'm never going to... It causes us to be stagnant and stinky and polluted, and anything that's in our life will die. Life cannot be sustained if it's held on to. Life must be given freely. So an offended Christian is one who takes life in, but because of the fear, they can't release life back into other people's lives. And they become stagnant and you become imprisoned in the walls of offense. The New Testament describes you know what, guys? I'm just going to have to stop here because there's so much more 
that I want to get into. And I thought this was going to be one lesson, but I'm, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to stop. Let, let, let's, let's, um, let's focus on what I've said so far in this lesson that massive offenses makes us want to shut down, never to be hurt again. And don't beat yourself up because of that, because I believe that's a normal human instinct to do that. But he didn't call us as Christians to be normal humans. He called us to have life and have it more abundantly and to live in him and to actually to train ourselves to try to be as much like him as we can. We can learn so much from the Word of God. It is the roadmap to our life. And so what I want you to do after this verse, after this lesson too, I want you to think about, are there offenses in your life that you are literally holding on to because you're gonna say, this will never happen again to me. I refuse to let this happen again to me. I'm holding on to it. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to forgive. I'm not going to let it go. And when you hold on to something dead, and that's what offenses are, it becomes a part of you and you become dead. So let's talk about next how the Bible teaches us how to break those strongholds. Because let me tell you, that offense will become a stronghold in your life. It will become something that will become bigger than you, I promise you. Been there, done that, not bragging about it, but know that it's real. Okay, until next time, till the next lesson, we'll pick right up uh, after this and go in talking about how these walls can be strongholds, but what we can do about it, okay? Love you guys. Until next lesson, I will talk to you later. Bye.